Thank you. Hello. So this is uh, the story about the Rio type tape slide group. Here they are. The group ran from 1983 to 1988. Uh, they received funding from the, uh, the from the Jubilee Trust. So they bought um, cameras, uh, uh, recording equipment, mixing equipment, a dark room, and uh, from this grant, and then Hackney adult education department came up with funding for to appoint uh, a tutor and Sandra Hooper was appointed as tutor and she ran the group until it uh, sort of died in 1988. Uh, they were based at the Rio and she recruited um, well, unemployed teenagers to join this project. It was the project has started in or uh, well, grew out of uh, the Young Photographers Project that had been running in uh, Centerprise across the road for a few years. Uh, so with the funding, they um, got all the gear. You can see uh, there's a guy there with a portable tape recorder, a couple of people with cameras. Uh, about two dozen people maybe went through the group during the course of, the, of its work. They made newsreels. They made um, newsreels about local events and national events. Um, the newsreels were made out of uh, slides and tape recordings, which included uh, interviews with people on the streets uh, and just commentary. The stories they covered were national and local stories. Um, so the miners' strike was big, housing, unemployment, you know, generally the impact of Thatcherism on, uh, on Hackney. And um, they made they took about 12,000 photos and countless miles of audio tape. The audio tapes disappeared, unfortunately, but the, um, the slides, they stayed in the basement of the cellar for about 30 years until a couple of years ago they were um, fitting out the new uh, screen at the cinema and uh, Andy, the manager there, found the slide cabinet and took it upstairs and then the photographer uh, Tamara Stoll, who was researching her book about uh, Ridley Road Market, which is just out and it's fantastic, well she found out about this and told me and I started taking them home in uh, a carrier bag, um, <laughs> sort of uh, a few hundred at a time, um, scanned, well, they were very dirty, they were, uh, their glass mounted slides. The glass was, was really filthy. Uh, the, the cinema operated a sort of a public archive. People could go in and look at these slides, choose what they wanted, and the team would print them up for them. So everyone, I think it was compulsory to eat chips before you handled the slides. <laughs> so they're extremely dirty, and, and the glass was broken. Anyway, that, you know, I cleaned them up and scanned them. And there's one popping out. Onto the um, onto the screen now. It was uh, you know a fantastic trip for me really. I relived my thirties. I saw photos of friends, neighbours, Jenny, my wife, people I'd worked with, events I'd been to. It's uh, uh, a real really important collection of um, photos that records life in Hackney in the mid eighties. Okay. So, as I said, they record, they made, they had editorial meetings to plan stories, they'd assign tasks, and then they'd go out and shoot them. So, the Rio Cinema is putting a random selection on their Instagram account, which is called Rio Cinema Archive. And you, they put a new one up every couple of days. There's about 700 up there at the moment. Uh, I think this is Daubeny Fields on the right. That's Daubeny Fields in the middle. That's uh, um, pensioners against dangerous pavements. The uh, <laughs> oh yeah, the uh, the group uh, followed this story. They uh, met with MPs, oh, all sorts of things. The pavements are still crap though. And that's Hackney Women's Centre, which used to be on Dalston Lane. That's the I think is that the old. The library next to it? I don't know. Anyway, as I said, I, I think it's a, an extremely important collection, as a piece of hackney history. Um, 
the, it's going to end up in the Hackney Archive, so everyone will be able to see it there. Um, but I've got to catalogue it first, so that might take a little while. So, as I said, they, the stories that the uh, people reported on were many and various. There are, uh, but the main one in Stoke Newton, I suppose the big story in the mid-80s was the death of Colin Roach. That's uh, Mr. Roach. That's his father on the left, and that's his mother just next to him. Um, Colin Roach was a young black man. He was found shot dead in the foyer of the old police station on Stoke Newton High Street in 1983. <coughs> the uh, coroner's court delivered a, a verdict of suicide but uh, members of the community weren't happy with that. Um, there were inconsistencies in the uh, accounts given by the police. Um, the police, I mean, the, the family were trying to get an in, uh, a public inquiry into what had happened, but they were treated by, with contempt by the police. Mr. Mr. Roach was arrested and assaulted. Other supporters were arrested countless times. There was a, was a man called Ace Kelly was arrested, I think, six times and imprisoned. He, he later got quite a substantial payout in the 90s. But, uh, yeah, it was there. And there were regular demonstrations. This one was on the first anniversary of uh, Colin Roach's death outside the police station. So there's a list of people that uh, died in uh, Stoke Newton Police Station. Seta Sims, Michael Ferreira, uh, and others. And this uh, banner here, it says, uh, you can't see it all, but it says Stoke Newton and Hackney Defence uh, Campaign. They, they were campaigning for uh, a public inquiry into what had happened. Um, they, were, they had a, a police spy. Uh, this came out a couple of years ago in the recent inquiry into undercover policing. It's a man called Tim Spence uh, was placed in, uh, in that group to, to, spy on, uh, to spy on their activities. Okay, and there were I think there were five, as I remember, big demonstrations up and down the high street. This is opposite the police station. There's the old Vogue Cinema. Uh, they were very tense occasions. They were heavily policed, and uh, people were angry. And here we are coming down North Old Road onto the common that you can see Ernie Roberts, our then MP. And you can also see a bit of Rain's Dairy before it was turned into a block of flats. The meeting ended, uh, the rally ended up on, on the common around the corner. <coughs> Lots of policemen. They also, the uh, group reported on uh, housing, homelessness, squatting, rogue landlords, damp, rats, all that stuff. This is just up the road. This is um, the, at the end of Wordsworth Road. Um, the house is still there. It, it, it looks better than that now. Um, <laughs> but you can see the house next door to it was also boarded up. Um, yeah. And there's Watcots, the builders that was next door. This is um, this is in Albert Town. They did a the group reported on the progress of the uh, development of Butterfield Green. They reported on council meetings and photographed um, bits of Albert Town as it was being demolished. And that's Sandra Hooper, the woman that ran the project. She lives in Brighton now. Fine old houses. This is looking up Wordsworth Road, uh, just behind us. It's, it's up that way, isn't it? Um, and it's looking up towards Allen Road. Um, so the houses on this part of um, Albert Town have been demolished. There are a few more to go, and a few, the, the end house on uh, Allen Road was yet to go as well. And a few months later, it looked like that, the, the end houses on Allen Road had gone to reveal the um, pub. I'm not sure. What's it called? Prince of Wales. Prince of Wales, that's it. 
And this is, anybody like to guess? Clissold Road, yeah. Um, this is up, just up by, the, the pools are just here to the right. It's almost the end house on, on that block. And if you look carefully, you can see a squatter in there. <laughs> all these houses were squatted. They were all squatted. Any guess? Any guess? Begins with a C. It's uh, Kaysenov Road and Osbaldiston Road. Um, magnificent pile. The, it's, the house has been uh, restructured since then. It doesn't look, well, it looks similar, but the door is on the right hand side now. So. But uh, Hackney's Victorian housing stock was in uh, very poor condition. The other big story in uh, the 80s was the miners' strike. Uh, that ran from 84 to 85. Um, and people in Hackney, there were lots of collections for food, money, clothing, um, cash. Uh, and somehow or other, Hackney twinned itself with a mining village in South Wales called Oakdale. And this is the Oakdale Brass Band that come to say thank you, uh, coming out of the town hall on Church Street and proceeding down Church Street. There's their banner. Here are some genuine Welsh miners on the left. And, um, yeah. And the, the, the group reported on, uh, well, they went with the food convoys down to South Wales. They photographed and made recordings of uh, their reception there, and they're, they're all in the archive as well. And coming up Church Street, there's Wincops. And I think that's Jane there. That uh, might not be. So that's the miners. And then still on Church Street, this is William Patton School. I don't know what Ofsted would say, but this was um, in response to. Um, the de deportation of the Hasbudak family. They were a, a Turkish family. Mum and dad, they'd come here in the 70s, I think. Uh, and they had two kids, uh, Zeynep, who was eight, and Fatih, who was six. They, the kids were born here. The Home Office decided to deport the parents. And the parents at William Patton, staff at William Patton, <coughs> um, organised a campaign to see if they could prevent this from happening. There were, again, here's another, another Ofsted uh, provocation. Did they get deported? Wait till the last photo. Okay. <laughs> okay. Outside the police station on the high street, and no, it didn't work. Here they are at Heathrow. Um, yeah, they got sent back. I mean, um, more or less the same time as this was going on, the group also reported on a, um, a Greek Cypriot couple from, uh, well, from Cyprus, who, uh, again, the Home Office was trying to deport them, and they found sanctuary in the church in Somerstown in, Cam in Camden. I think, I think there were other cases like that as well. Uh, people weren't having it, but uh, so hostile environments. I heard that the children came back to Britain as adults. And it wasn't all grim. Uh, we had Smiley the Clown. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this, this is it. Uh, yeah, you had to laugh. <laughs> Literally. He, um, uh, this was a Stoke Newton Festival on Stoke Newton Common. Um, had a bat, they had bands, stalls, and clowning. And that's <coughs> Sue, who was our neighbour for a few years. She's now clowning in uh, Brighton, and she's called Susie Oddball. <laughs> she had the um, juggling shop on Islington Park Street in the early 90s, if you're into that sort of thing. So, and then in Clissold Park, this is the day that um, uh, Prince Charles and Princess Diana pledged their eternal love. 
and Rock Against Racism put on uh, this event. It was called Funk the Wedding. <laughs> um, and it was well attended. People had a good time. Militant entertainment. Uh, it wasn't just music. We had uh, <laughs> street theatre. Yeah. Where are they now? <laughs> uh, where are they now? This is um, uh, Princess May Road, looking up towards the court. A little bit of street life. Uh, not an unusual sight on Stoke Newton Roads. Our car ended up like that. Our VW Polo ended up like that in, on Thistlethwaite Road. And that's it. That's the uh, 25 pictures. As I say, there are lots more on um, Instagram. And, they're all, and there's um, an exhibition at Hackney Museum in May, middle of May, featuring all this stuff. And they're having a couple of events next week, harvesting the memories of people who lived here in the 80s. Uh, Post-its will be involved. It's, um... Thank you very much, Alan. Okay.